Hello everyone, it's Red with RedDragonLeo.com. Today is Sunday night about 7 p.m. So I'm finally getting around to doing this video. I actually took three days, or well, not three days, but uh, Saturday morning, then Saturday night, then Sunday most of the day to write the post. So sorry it's long. Uh, just had a lot of different things I wanted to, to kind of share that uh, you can you know look out there, look at throughout the week. I found uh, Benjamin Fulford's latest and uh, posted it. Um, a link to it on there as well. Lots of things going on behind the scenes. And I will get to those in a minute. I'm going to go over the charts first and then I will get to the uh, uh, the story behind the story, I guess you might say. So, looking at the charts here, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you that. I'm just going to give you some scenarios and and um, you know just kind of go from there it it really surprised me last week that uh, we had an up week I really expected to, to go down but you know there again um, that's the way the gangsters play this game is to trick us all so that's really nothing new however going back and looking at some of these charts this does look like um, what you'd call an exhaustion move up that would be similar to other ones, other patterns, like right here, where you have a down week prior to it, and then you have that one last up week, and then you roll over. And I've seen this happen. Here you were going up into a period, and you were starting to lose momentum, and you were banging on that 200-day moving average, and you did a spinning top, and you're thinking, well, the next week must be down. Now they have a big exhaustion gap up um, gap week up I wouldn't call it a gap week but a big white candle uh, week and uh, close at the highs and then down the next the next week this seems to be a common common thing when we look back um, throughout many of the other ones here's another example right here here you had one two three four weeks of indecision wild swings up down up down up down and then finally one big red candle solid candle closing up for the week and uh, then a sell-off after that and in uh, this one really wouldn't count I don't think because it it was from four four down weeks so that one doesn't count but um, let's look back here at some more and yeah, we can see it a little bit here in this area right here you can see where you've kind of trended up put in a down week and I don't know if there's two down weeks in there or not. Might be two down weeks in there. They're just kind of blurred together. And then you have an up week, an exhaustion week. Then the next week is down. And you'll notice that in every case, the next week did go higher at some point. See that topping tail right there? Um, it did go higher at some point. On this one, uh, as we can't really see this one here for these numbers here in the way. But if this one was one, then you can see it did pop up higher. So this tells us that there's a strong possibility that it will go higher at some point in the week. I tend to believe that's going to happen you know, early in the week. So uh, this one here did not do that, as you can see. That's one of the rare exceptions. But this exhaustion... Uh, move up from this one small down week and then kind of a indecision week here and this exhaustion up only pro produced one down week and then it continued to go back up so that really uh, you know without only counting as one down week I don't really think that that one qualifies but this one here certainly does because this looks more similar to what we're seeing whereas we had four weeks of sideways wild trading um, we currently had, besides last week, we had two prior weeks of down weeks, which um, would be, you know, just like two of these instead of four. So this exhaustion week up was probably similar to last week. And then this week here, if, if we are to finally roll over, and I, I don't know, um, you know, nobody knows except the gangsters, of course. Uh, let's see, call up Ben Bernanke and ask him when's the market going to crash. I'm sure he could tell you. So could Lloyd Blankfein of Goldman Sachs or Jamie Dillon. I'm sure they know as well. But in any case, you see that this red 
uh, topping tail right here, this little short topping tail, it did go higher in the market. So, uh, you know, I do believe that that's going to be the same scenario here. We're going to have, if we do roll, this is if, okay, we don't know that they're not going to, you know, keep moving this thing out. But if we do roll over, then we should have a little bit higher move than where we currently are at this 1311. I don't know how far it's going to go up. Maybe, uh, maybe 1320, maybe uh, 1323. I, I don't know, but that should be a move up higher. And um, so, when's that going to happen? Well, I don't know. I went over to Cobra's chart because he gets the sentiment trader, and uh, he posts their their latest. And here is the latest from the sentiment trader. Monday seasonality wise Monday is the fifth trading day so there's a 56 percent chance it will close green on the S&P and 48 percent chance it will close negative on the Nasdaq so for the most part that really isn't much um, you know lead way one way or another odds are what would you call that 50 50 I guess you might call that um, so um, uh, you know, so but that's the biggest uh, biggest chance, and then the next days after that, or it looks like to be a down day, which would be Tuesday and Wednesday, then an up day on Thursday and Friday, um, and then uh, so yeah, so it looks like it should be a choppy week one way or another. Maybe this is down to start our first move down, and then up here for a wave two or something like that. Um, just you know, looking to the seasonality, this definitely points to uh, Thursday being an up day. So if we have Monday is up a little bit, Tuesday, Wednesday is down. Uh, you know, you look to get out on Thursday because that'd probably be a back test. It's most likely it's going to be a back test of wherever we move down to. It's going to be like a wave two up. Is what is what most likely that would that would be. So uh, moving back to the charts here. So what does that um, that mean? Well, uh, it's you know speculation again. That's all we can do is speculate on this market. While um, it looks bearish there for the week, um, looking at the month, you really can't tell anything here on the monthly except that we we seem to be pretty uh, overbought. But that doesn't mean it can't continue up. I mean there are uh, after reading Cobra's. Uh, post there, you know, he made a valid point that um, this could be an A move up, a B move down, and a C move that'll take us up here to 1400 and something. Yeah, that's possible. You know, anything's possible. The key here is what are the gangsters planning? Are they going to inject more funny money into the market? Uh, they just had the Legatus pilgrimage meeting over the weekend. So, what is their plans? Are they going to take, take the money out? And let the market fall and this be this be it or are they going to put more money in and, and, and try to drive it up even higher creating even more of a, a crash because clearly on a monthly basis this thing is still up but I mean you know that could turn on a dime I mean you just snap your fingers and it could easily turn back down any time so there's no way of really telling that all we can see with this is just looking at this and saying it's up in the stratosphere and it's definitely overbought um, and that's about all you can see from it and when it finally rolls over and goes down and you'll see this move up and this roll down and it'll be too late by then we're short-term traders so so again back to this weekly chart one of the other things here besides this exhaustion gap we we, we do notice that down here we are getting slower I mean lower and lower histogram tower bars and at some point it will just you know drop big time this is what happened right here in the flash crash you look here it was slowly rolling over then BAM really hit hard there because it was you know the flash crash um, so it does not have to go all the way down to zero nice and pretty and finally roll into negative territory you know it could it could drop at any time because these are weeklies and we are up here in overbought territory majorly so um, you know, so you know, anything's to anything can happen in, in next week. Uh, you know, I, I'm just trying to, to throw out possibilities is all because I really just 
I really just don't know. Uh, any move that would that would come down should, um, if it comes down, first move down should have a back test and should move down and, and kind of back test. Will it do it like that, uh, similar to over here? I would think it would. So you know, maybe um, maybe like a Monday might be an up day like this. Then Tuesday, Wednesday down, and Thursday, Friday up. And then next week, you know, something like that. The week after, the second week, which um, that would all be validated with the turn date of somewhere around the Legatus pilgrimage, allowing these gangsters to cash their checks that they, you know, robbed from the American public. So, uh, on a daily chart, it's it is it's certainly possible to do that. It's certainly possible to do that. But I will say that uh, it, it currently it's still lined up bullish. You can see, I mean, all these moving averages are lined up bullish. There's nothing here to say that it's going to roll over, uh, other than other things like um, uh, put to call ratios and and VIX. We'll we'll look at the Cobra's blog here with the VIX, and you can see it is coming to into some major support here. Um, and you'll notice every time that it hit this lower uh, bullet, Bollinger Band, Bollinger, <laughs> Bollinger Band, <laughs> Bollinger Band, I'm sorry, I'm tired, uh, it uh, hit it and turned back up after that. So, you know, maybe they bury it one last time and it hits it Monday or something and then that's it and then it reverses hard. Uh, I don't know. It looks to me like it's in good support right here in this area. So it could go down a little bit more. Looking at that, what is that, 14, well, oh, let's see, probably about 14, uh, that's 15, that's about 15 or something, I believe, um, right there. It's uh, certainly higher than 14. I think this 14.94 is the, uh, the Bollinger Band right there, not the, uh, not the low right here, I don't believe. So, so anyway, e either way, it does have a little bit more room to go down if it, if it wanted to, if they really want to push it down. Um, so I'm not getting anything from the 60 minute chart here other than it is pointing back up as you can clearly see it is still up here in urban rock territory but it can roll over and trade sideways for most of Monday it could very easily pop up here uh, or roll over I just don't know it uh, you know the seasonality wise as you've seen from sentiment trader courtesy of uh, Cobra um, 50 you know 50 some percent was well, 53 I can't remember now percent chance that it would close positive um, 58 I think he said it so you know you could roll up here throughout the day and maybe get up here to one and put in a negative divergence and then roll over by the end of the day uh, so that might take the market up to here that could very well hit this uh, this will be a very important trend line as well so um, this one here that's not drawn, if you connect a line from here to here to here to here, these lows right here, and then draw one over top, um, you're, you're making a, you know, uh, a triangle pattern. Well, it's actually kind of a rising wedge, I guess, but, you know, if it breaks, if it breaks and heads back down, it, it should be pretty heck on ugly. So that means Monday morning, you know, that if it breaks down uh, and rolls over, then uh, we could have a decent down day on Monday. I just don't feel that that's going to happen. I think even if we do roll over, I think they're going to contain it and juice it back up. Uh, so even if it breaks, I, I just don't trust them. You know how, they're, how they manipulate this market. Probably the more likely thing is they gap it up to try to take out all the bears that went short again. Gap it up and then just run it up and hold it up all day. Yeah, that's just the way they play this game. 30 minute chart isn't giving us no, nothing really at all either. You can see right down here, we're just above zero line. We could go right back up, or we could just continue on down. Either way, it could roll over. Just really not saying a lot. Uh, same thing right here. You draw this line from here to here to here. It's an important trend line. If they break, it could, it could go all the way down to 1290 and push right back up. Very, very possible. So. You know that that might be the plan maybe they they trick us they go down on Monday then run it back up one more time to hit a high and then and then uh, and then go down um, Tuesday uh, Tuesday Wednesday uh, as the sentiment 
uh, from past history, you know, would would indicate. Uh, that's you know possibility. Uh, third, uh, fifth, fifteen minute chart kind of gives you an even better look. Here you can draw the line here as well. Here to here to here to here to here. All these lines. Draw a line right here, and you can see that it's running out of time. It's coming to the apex. It needs to pop up, or it needs to 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 break back down. So one of those one of those things are going to happen. So that kind of gives you an idea of what I'm looking for Monday. Uh, if they break it down, possibly they go down here to 1294, turn and run it right back up. That's a possibility. But we're getting very, very close to it. We got this week and next week that it's very critical that the market breaks down or we're going to really just keep on going up higher to 1400 plus uh, into March and April. And it'll just, it'll drive you us bears nuts. I know that. So. Um, I did um, wanted to go over some other stuff here that uh, I've been listening to, and that is right here. You should definitely listen to part one of this. It's very very important. That um, is on my blog. I, I put a link to this. You must listen to this call. Uh, and I put a link to this so you can go there and listen to it. Also copy these as well so you can right click and download them if you choose. But I just went here and listened to it, and it talks about the creation of a new money system done by being pushed and implemented by the Chinese because they are really the, the good guys here in the American, the um, Federal Reserve Nazi cabal elite gangster members are the bad guys and that um, basically talking about this meeting that they have Friday that stated that they were going to um, uh, bring in a new currency to, um, that will be backed by oil or gold or silver. It'll be backed by something tangible. So this is the plan. This is not what these gangsters want because if that happens, then um, they will not uh, be able to keep us indebted and enslaved if they do that. And that'll cut cut out their drug money, their laundering money. You know, the CIA, of course, is the biggest drug dealer in the world. And you know, just arms, weapons, everything you can think of. It, it's really going to put an end to the reign of power for the elite if this happens. So we really got to support the the Chinese, the White Dragon Society in this, um, because they are the good guys in here. They do not want war. They they um, want to um, free us. They want to free help free the American people. They really do. I mean, they like Americans. It's that they hate the Federal Reserve because they're gangsters. So um, anyway, I put a link here to also Benjamin Fulford's latest message. And he, he clearly says that a lot of the, the leaders up here in this pyramid are being replaced. And um, so this is a very, very important plan that um, they are doing, that the good guys, the white hats, that they are slowly doing is, is replacing these people, these uh, cartel people. So, um, you know, to, you know, the... the the pyramid and they call them M1 uh, through M9 so you can I'll let you read this post but it goes on about it as well and of course the riots that are over in Egypt uh, they the elite had something to do with that as um, they probably created and I'm pretty sure that they wanted that to happen and they want to spread to the United States so that they'll be rioting in in the United States and they'll be able to to have um, a martial law and they want to bring in private armies uh, and Benjamin Fulford says you know Chinese knows about this they will be stopped they will not let the private armies come in here and arrest us American uh, public and put us in in um, in prison camps I mean FEMA camps um, same thing ain't it yes prison camps anyway and um, so this is this is some good news that this these people are working working with them and, and stuff like this. But it's a very very interesting read for those of you who haven't been able to read Benjamin Fulford here in a while. The link is on my blog as well in in the post. Um, so you definitely want to 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 read up about that. And speaking of that, it, there is a mention here in this video. This uh, video here. I think it's um, I think it's part three at the end of part three, uh, but just listen to all four of them when you got a chance. But it talks about what happened with the um, missile that launched off the coast 
of San Diego. I thought it was LA, but apparently it was San Diego, so I was mistaken there. And that missile was a Chinese submarine. The story of, of what happened was that um, basically the United States went and sent, um, let me uh, preview this here, they sent two aircraft carriers over into Chinese, uh, over into the Chinese water, their uh, territory, their economic zone, their safety zone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is their international borders, I guess you would call it. it. It would be the word for it that I'm looking for. They sent them them over there and went right into their borders in their area. And the Chinese politely sent a um, group of um, you know their their navy ships out there to ask the Americans to leave, and they would not leave. So the Chinese already, I guess, they already had the submarine off the coast of San Diego there, and they launched a missile to warn these. Um, you know, Illuminati gangsters that they had the power to sink those uh, aircraft carriers at any time they wanted because they didn't even know that they were there. They probably had a submarine up, up underneath them and they didn't even know it. So they launched this missile. This mu missile did have an EMP on it and this uh, EMP weapon exploded behind one of the aircraft carriers which was the Ronald Reagan and it didn't do any damage to it because the Ronald Reagan uh, had um, uh, lots of steel on it and it was armor plated and it protected the electronics in it. It had plenty of, of steel protection I guess. Iron plates and stuff that protect against EMPs. But a uh, nearby uh, Princess cruise line ship was nearby and didn't have the protection and it got fried the electronics on it got fried and they had to tow it in uh, to harbor so you know the Chinese did, did wasn't trying to start war here they were just trying to tell the federal the feds the you know almost slipped up and called them the Federation what an insult that would be to the to the Federation with the the good guys inside of um, you know the Star Trek world and, and the Federation sorry sorry Gene Rod, Roddenberry I almost slipped up there. No, the feds, the gangsters. They wanted to send a message to them. They said, look, you didn't even know our sub was there. We snuck up on you. We had the power. We could have sunk the Ronald Reagan and whatever the other aircraft carrier was if we wanted to. We didn't. We don't want war. But you guys need to get the hell off our, our, our air area, you know, out of our territory, off our, our waters, and go back home. You know, these... The Chinese are really, really the good guys in this, folks. Everything I read about them, they are the good guys. They are trying to help the American people. Um, so, anyway, the that would be all three of these. I think that was in th part three. But, again, you can listen to them at your convenience. But definitely listen to this first part right here that talks about the, uh, the meeting that just happened Saturday, Sunday, with the White Dragon Society, which was uh, the Chinese, went to the White House, they had a meeting, They're, they basically said, we're not going to be using the dollar anymore as a global currency to trade oil with. This is similar to what Lindsey Williams was talking about in, um, you know, with the euro being destroyed and, and the dollar being destroyed. And um, uh, so there's a link right here that, um, that tells you even more about it, that confirms what uh, the 50 to 70 percent dollar devaluation that's coming and this thing could happen overnight um, so it's coming really close but the Chinese New Year uh, apparently either just happened or it's happening uh, Monday uh, but Monday could be a very very important day it very well could be the top in the market simply because of all these things transpa transpiring, to transpiring together boy I'm tired obviously transpiring together Sorry about that. So you have the next two weeks that are generally bearish. Um, you have them bearish because of the, the month that they're in and, and various other reasons. Also because of how long we've been up, how many weeks we've been up, uh, because of the exhaustion weekly candle. Uh, so there's, and because of the Legatus pilgrimage turn date, 
um, and because of this event that just happened with the Chinese and basically they're going to say oil is now going to be traded in the Iraqi dinero I guess is 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 what they were talking about so that the Iraqis will be free of their debt international debt and uh, that's in that article as well so um, that article was was where sorry um, here yes so this was the um, article but definitely go and read this because there's a lot of stuff coming to a head and I believe it's coming to a head next week so uh, I spent a lot of time reading this and trying to write this post up so it kind of jumps around I apologize for the post kind of going from uh, anger to in the beginning from Saturday to uh, jumping around here with Benjamin Fulford and uh, and the Illuminati again but you you guys all know me by, by now know that my posts are not always about just charts there I tell you the stuff that's trying to go that's going on behind the scenes and and um, this was some of the stuff that um, I have uh, discovered so um, so I definitely believe that um, something is going to hit the fan oh here it was uh, is this one it? Do, do, do. I'll put this link on there as well, gang, uh, for this one. But it's exactly the same, I believe. But she talks a little bit more about it as well. But um, maybe it's this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. The global settlements, uh, the dinar and the Chinese. So the Iraqi dollar is the dinar, I guess. And um, so they are going to trade and buy oil with the dinar instead of the dollar. This is really going to change up stuff, and this just happened over the weekend, so this could very well be the um, the turning point that we're looking for in the market. So um, I think we're really, really close this week, next week. I, I I I feel like we are, you know, I feel like we are. Oh, and it also goes on to tell you about the Bush stealing the uh, the gold. They were stealing truckloads of gold with garbage trucks. Um, weeks and weeks and weeks prior to 9-11 happening they were taking out four garbage trucks a night they were stealing gold from the Twin Towers and this gold is owed to them from uh, World War uh, World War two and it's a 75 year lease from China it was owed to China and Bush and Cheney thought they could steal it gangsters man what gangsters man I saw be take taken out and beheaded these guys along with Bernanke and and um, I mean all of them, Obama, just line them all up. They're just gangsters. Wanted to steal this gold from the Chinese after the Chinese helped us out, and we didn't even know about it. Um, it's just it's pathetic. There's a lot of stuff on my blog here. Take the time to read it. Check on the links instead of me just sitting here talking about it and going through it, because it's just a, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, and listen to those links you know so I'll leave this up and just add videos to it for at least two days so that you guys can get a chance to to go to go check it all out stuff like that so um so anyway that's that's pretty much it folks I think we're coming to a head a turning point I think uh, just like it shows you here on this weekly chart um, if we if this is the turn that I expect it to be then we should have a nice red candle right here but we should have a higher high than here it should come and probably will come on Monday um, so Monday might be the best time to get short and we might have a red candle like this right here because this looks eerily similar to this pattern right here and uh, and you know so um, and look at this one here here's another example of an exhaustion gap up you know here's where you had a, a down week and then you had this exhaustion gap up and then you had um, and then you had the start of a nice move down. Oh, and don't forget that that was into the Legatus pilgrimage as well, February the fourth through the uh, through the sixth at that time, bottoming right on the fifth, right at the fake print that I had. So, also keep your eyes out for fake prints because I think they'll be throwing one out here soon. Uh, although we got that one for thirty-five sixty-five on the spy, I don't think we're going to drop to thirty-five. 65 that's what you call a um, <laughs> that don't even classify as the Great Depression that classify as uh, Armageddon so uh, I think that was some other type of code I don't think it means 35 65 on the spy um, that print 
that would be 350 on the SPX. Now that is insane. I don't think that's going to happen. So, um, anyway, that's it, gang. Uh, we'll uh, see you all. See all of you um, Monday morning.